So I research in biomechanics and then in biomechanics there are maybe the two main differences or two main subfields is like vertebrate and then invertebrate. I'm in the invertebrate world with sea stars. So biomechanics, bio, biology and the mechanics is um, mechanics. So the movement of life is how I would describe it. My dissertation is about uh, almost the emergent behavior of the two feet and how they coordinate. So my first chapter, I put weights and floats on a sea star and see how the two feet coordinate or if they don't coordinate. Um, and then there was a like a analytical theoretical model that was made of the two feet where they only coordinated with a certain mass so then that's where the idea came from if I change the mass are they going to coordinate mass or weight are they going to coordinate so this is a pretty standard setup in biomechanics where there would be cameras underneath this tank and then also cameras on the side of the tank so that you can get the bottom view of a sea star and then also the side view and then you can um, analyze the data in a way where it gives you 3D data. And then I just put LEDs on the side of the tank and then if I turn it on, I don't know if you can see in the camera, but there's, there's marks on the uh, on a tank that you can see much more clearly. And that was the idea where whenever the sea star tube foot touches the surface of the tank, that tube foot would light up. So I was studying frogs prior to this. That was my first biomechanics lab. And then I just couldn't bear studying an animal that has a face on it. And then that's one reason, uh, sea stars makes it easier to like manipulate the animal. And then also I just couldn't stop wondering how like a, something like a frog that has a brain is able to do these really fluid motions and that's really amazing. And then, but what's even more amazing is how our animals how animals without a brain can also do fluid motions with even more appendages without a brain. So that's why the sea star was the animal for me. My second chapter is on the nervous system of the sea star. So the sea star has five arms and those five arms have radio nerves that connect to a nerve ring. So how are they going to perform their coordination or different types of movements like flipping over if I sever their nerves? I get them from wholesalers. And, um, and some people in the field, not necessarily in the biomechanics field, but in the sea star field, if they have a permit, they can get them like in the sea. They can dive and go get them or go in the tide pools and get them. One of my chapters is about how well the two feet coordinate according to light with and without mechanical coupling. Um, so that has ecological importance because sea stars like in some in some fields, they, their population can decimate corals and in order to travel to the coral, they have to travel towards a dark patch. So that has something to do with phototaxis towards or away from light. And then in some fields, they aren't going to those fields enough and their absence is bad for the environment. So I'm studying their behavior according to light. So that's one of my chapters from an ecological point of view. Uh, there isn't quite a system that has been established in soft robotics where it's able to control so many appendages, the tube feet, 
with such a simple control system. So I'm hoping that my research can contribute somewhat to that field also.